Today is more about a how-to video. I have had a question from a good friend of mine who's going through a program that we do for CPAs about taking notes and keeping track of stuff and getting into systems and typing them up afterwards and all that stuff. So today I just want to run you through what my real-time note-taking process looks like when you've got client meetings all day every day or you know pretty often throughout the day anyway. So that's the topic for today. So the first thing is like, you go back to the tools that I recommend everybody use. Number one is an agenda. If you're gonna meet with a client, there should be some kind of agenda. Sometimes the agenda is implicit, it's understood because you do the same thing every time. If the topics or the flow of the meeting changes or new topics come to the table each meeting, it's pretty much mandatory that you have an agenda. So, I just left the client appointment. I had an appointment this morning for, for, like for a couple hours, first appointment of the day, just left that. And we had an agenda. Old school, printed out on dead tree paper, right? So here's our agenda. There's six agenda points that we went through on this, maybe six agenda points. Uh, so we re reviewed their financial performance. We talked about some critical KPIs that we talk about every single meeting. Uh, we did updates on project to-do items, so commitments they made the last time we were together. There's a list of those uh, that we keep in base camp where they can see them and we can see them. And then uh, we talked about a couple of specific topics that they, they let my assistant know yesterday that they wanted to talk about, so I added those two agenda points to the agenda. And then the last agenda item is priorities for the next 90 days. So that's what we talked about. Everybody knew that's what we were going to talk about. but. Like just looking at this agenda, if I'm gonna go back there in a month or two months or three months or a week, just looking at this agenda doesn't tell me, it tells me what we went into the meeting to talk about, but it doesn't tell me what we actually talked about during the meeting. For that, you have to have notes. So I'm not gonna show you the actual notes because they have actual client confidential information in them. But I just got off another phone call. I had the earbuds in. Uh, my, uh, my virtual assistant and I have a twice weekly phone call where we go through all the open items and tasks and different things and get on the same page with what's happening that week and next week. We just finished that call and I'll show you the notes that I took for that. And they basically, it covered, I do the same thing with clients. Like the, the format is no different. So here's what it looks like. All right, so probably the most important tool I have is this old school notebook. This is, uh, this is actually a Japanese notebook. It's made by a company called, I think Nanami Paper Company is where I get it from. It's called the Seven Seas Writer. What I like about it is that the pages are kind of like the pages you find in a Bible. They're super thin and they don't bleed through if you use a fountain pen. The greatest thing is there's 480 something pages in this book and I use this book for everything and because there's 480 pages in it, it means that I can use it for quite a while before I have to switch over to a new one. I have like four of these waiting on my bookshelf that are completely blank. So here's the page from the notes I took with my assistant. Every page starts the same way. There's a page number at the top. There's the date and there's just the name of the person and what we we're talking about. So this could be the client's name and the meeting we're at or whatever. I have these little call outs that I use to highlight different sections of the meeting. So open items, this is all the stuff that we talked about that has to get done. So there's some billing things I have to do, some stuff I have to get to a client that she reminded me of. Uh, and then the difference here is the squares are things that I have to do. The circles are things that the other person has to do. So in this case, this is Carrie, my executive assistant, has to get these things done. If I were taking notes with a client, these circles would represent things that the client committed to. Uh, another header of things that we're talking about me going on vacation. She's going to be out of the office next week. So getting on the same page with that. And then here's a little diagram I drew after the fact of some things that I, I thought of during the meeting and a to-do item that I have to do from that. So what happens now is this is in the notebook. I can always go back to this notebook and that's very important for a couple of really good reasons. Now some of you know how much I love technology and gadgets and software and apps and all that stuff 
and you're saying, I can't believe this guy uses such an old school technology as a paper notebook. Well, that's important because number one, this never gets between me and communicating with the client. If I have a laptop open in front of me and the client, it creates some kind of barrier. I don't care how unobtrusive you want it to be. Now, there are lots of times when I do have the laptop open. When I'm meeting with a client, for a lot of my weekly clients, I'll have the, the laptop open on the desk uh, or the conference table or wherever we're meeting because we're, we're referencing things we're going through. That's, but for most of the time, I really like, and I even then, I always have this notebook flat on the table open to a page where it doesn't get in the way. People expect to see a notebook. People, it's kind of a sign of respect toward them when I'm taking notes that, you know, when they're talking to me and I'm actually taking notes, I'm paying attention, I'm noting things. They're paying attention that I'm noting things. They're paying attention to what I'm noting because if I start taking notes on something, then there's kind of an implicit understanding between us that this is important, I need to remember this or I need to think through this just as important, probably more important, is there is no lag time in my notebook. If something important is said, uh, then I don't have to fire up an app, I don't have to switch apps, I don't have to get the computer to wake back up. It's right there, it's in front of me, it takes zero effort, energy, just to pick up the pen and start writing. I also like to doodle, scribble, uh, draw little diagrams, things that are gonna help me remember or think through problems. Um, I, th I think visually a lot of times so the ability to draw little pictures or diagrams kind of like the one that you saw here of this little this is basically a Trello board that we're gonna set up and I was thinking through what are the columns in that workflow so now I'll just go back to that when I set up the Trello work board and it's right there I don't have to worry about it it's the picture is right there and it should look like that when I'm finished with it now from here from here from here there's a couple things that happen I need to take the things that I'm supposed to do and transfer them to my master to-do list, right? Right now, for reasons we'll address in another video, actually I already talked about this in a video, that's an old school piece of paper. This is my master to-do list. So I'm going to take these things that I've, that I've said I need to do and the things that my assistant needs to do and I'm going to transfer those over here because this I review every single day several times a day and I won't forget things. The notebook I don't review every single day. It's primarily for archive purposes. So I'll take those things and the shorthand that I'll use, once I add those items, once I add those items to my list, I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna draw a line through it. The line through it, to me, indicates that it has been added to my master to-do list. Sometimes the thing that is on here that I planned on getting done, it doesn't need to be done any, anymore for whatever reason. The client may call me and say, we already got that done, or we decided not to do that, or I can get that from another source, and I'll put an A over top of the box to mean that that's abandoned. Sometimes the item can be done, like as I'm processing my notes, I can go ahead and finish the item. In that case, I just check it off and I don't even bother to put it on my master to-do list. The next thing that happens is I need to archive this. I do want a digital copy of this somewhere where I can get to it because I might lose this. God forbid it hasn't happened yet. Hope it never happens. But I could lose it. It could be stolen. It could be destroyed. Lots of things could happen to this physical notebook. And I want an, a digital archive copy. Not just because I want it in safekeeping, but I'm not always gonna have this notebook with me. I'm gonna fill it up. This has probably got another 45 to 60 days left. When that 45 to 60 days is up, I'm gonna have to go to a new one, but I still wanna be able to see the notes that I took previously, and that is where Evernote comes in. I use Evernote for archiving all of my meeting materials. It could be things that people hand me in a meeting, or it could be stuff that uh, that I take into the meeting and it could be my notes. So all that stuff goes into Evernote. If it's something that they hand me in a meeting and it's just a few pages, I'll take a picture of it with my phone uh, with an app called ScanBot, I think. And there's a workflow in there set up where that goes directly. It sends a PDF document to Evernote. That's very helpful. Uh, or I'll just take a picture of it using the Evernote app. Or I'll take pictures and then put those in the Evernote app. In this case, all I'm gonna do as I'm gonna crank up my phone, I will open Evernote, take a quick photo. Now the important part 
is naming it. I'm going to name it uh, 160602, in this case, Carry Planning. 160602 is 2016, the first two digits I can always know are the year, 06 is the month, 02 is the day. So if I look at my calendar, I can go back to Evernote and I can search by that file name and I can find all the notes from that calendar day. I'll also go into Evernote and tag it. If it's a client, I'll tag it with the client's name. That way, if six months from now, I'm wondering what me and the client have talked about over the last six months, I can just go into Evernote, I can do a search for that tag, I can sort it by the name, it's going to be in chronological order, and I can go through those notes very quickly. But this is why, this is the, the most important part of this whole thing I haven't even talked about yet. And this is the secret sauce that makes this old school notebook technology coupled with Evernote the thing that I have not been able to beat with any other system. I have tried typing notes in. I've tried doing plain text notes. I've tried doing notes in Evernote. I've tried doing notes in a CRM application. I've tried doing notes in uh, word processors. I've tried doing notes in different apps and iPad apps and OS 10 apps. I've tried just about every note taking system and for the last four years or so, this is the one that has worked the best for me because there is something about seeing my handwriting that I can an immediately or much more quickly pick up on the context of what is being said or what was said uh, and it just enables a recall that is not there with plain text. The fact is one plain text document looks exactly like another plain text document and you have to process the text. You have to read it you have to comprehend it and then you have to recall the situation, the scenario where that happened in order for you to f get full recall. Here I can glance at a page and based on the diagram and whatever you know order the notes are in, how scribbled they are, sometimes I mean I've got diagrams in here you know this one I chose to highlight in blue uh, here's one with numbers and I can tell you exactly how these numbers are laid out those are journal entries I sat down and I was working on a client and neat and I was figuring out what the journal entries were I know that just by glancing at the page I don't have to read journal entry anywhere I just know that that's what that was so for me being able to see my handwriting is hugely important and if a system doesn't support that it's basically a non-starter I also love being able to have two or three hundred pages at any go at my disposal I refer to this book a lot more often than I ever refer to Evernote because with the work I do with clients we're meeting so often that I can usually go back through here and see the last four five six ten twelve meetings that we've had and they're all right here I should also mention that this page number the first seven or eight pages of this notebook are all page numbered I go ahead and pre number the pages and I will go through periodically every couple of months these are all empty page numbers and I will fill in the date and the whatever is at the top whatever is at the, the first line of this page goes in the index and that way I can go back through the index and if I know the date that I met with somebody it doesn't take me very long to find the exact page number so using my calendar plus Evernote plus handwriting plus an index it works awesome it's the it's the best note-taking system I've ever come up with I spend about two or three or four minutes after every meeting maybe putting up tidying up the notes finishing incomplete sentences maybe adding a diagram or two take a picture with my phone and I'm done super super easy super super effective see you guys tomorrow for archiving all of my meeting materials it could be things that people hand me in a meeting this is really awkward